So I went to Australia not too long ago to go on the Today Show, not to be confused with Today Show, which I also went on, which is pretty great. But what I didn't know is that it was going to be so difficult to get all the experimental assets, like the science assets, things like sulfur hexafluoride, dry ice, isopropyl alcohol, which doesn't exist, so we use methylated spirits. So it took a long time to get those things. So I was pretty exhausted at the end of my time in Australia, but I had two days, two days to go do Australian things. So on my last day, I asked Kate if we could go do something very Australian. He said, bro, I know exactly where I'm gonna take you. We're going to the Australian Reptile Park. You can pet the kangaroos. You can literally pet the kangaroos. Mind explosion. And then I started thinking more about it. Why are the animals in Australia so freaking weird, right? Like, they're like really weird. They're really, really weird. So exactly how did these animals get to be so weird? Australia broke away from Pangaea about 200 million years ago with its buddies, Africa, Antarctica, South America, and this super continent known as Gondwanaland. Then after it was just totally over chilling with the A-team, Australia bounced to go pursue other things, like being alone for 50 million years. Talk about social anxiety issues. Ooh. Seeking a better continental life, it ended up drifting away in what is now the Pacific and Indian Ocean totally solo. And because of its isolation and harsher evolving environments, its animals adapted in a way to keep living in this super rugged wilderness and all without the influence of other outside species. The result, super weird animals found nowhere else on Earth. Uh, I'm wearing my crocodile hunter hat because, um, well, you know. We're gonna go hot for some crocodiles. Oh, look, look, look what I found. I found a wild Australian. Oh, if I get too close to him, he's gonna, Oh, he's after me, he's after me, mate. <laughs> I cannot speak Australian, but whatever. Is that mine? It'll be fine, man, chill. Holy <laughs> Amazing. You can just pet the kangaroo. So, I'm gonna go ahead and name this guy Joe, because he's not quite a baby anymore. You're not a Joey. What is the longest distance a kangaroo can jump in one leap? A, five feet. B, 10 feet. C, 30 feet. D, 50 feet. The answer is C, 30 feet, which is about one foot more than the human world record. Except that kangaroos jump this while basically running and do it every day. So another thing about the uh, kangaroos Hold your hand in there, is that there are more kangaroos in Australia than there are people. But that's okay because they're so cute. Hey, bro. Okay, so we're in the koala part of the reptile park. And everybody knows that koalas sleep 22 hours. People like know that. That's like kind of a common fact. But why do they sleep 22 hours? And it's because they've evolved over time to actually be more adapted to Australia's land. And Australia is actually relatively nutrient poor. And the koala is the only creature to live solely on eucalyptus. Them being super slow and hanging out and being really mellow and sleeping for 22 hours is literally the adaption that they um, have now gained to allow them to live because their ancestors were actually bigger and had bigger brains. The word koala derives from the ancient aboriginal word which means A. Tree bear B. Long sleep C. No drink D. Monkey bear The answer is C. No drink because koalas rarely drink water, getting 90% of their hydration from the eucalyptus leaves they eat. Another one of the popular animals here in Australia, which you can only find in Australia, is the oh, wombat. Straight chilling like most Australian animals do. Which one of these statements is false about the wombat? A, it can run 25 miles an hour or 55 kilometers an hour. B, its marsupial pouch is upside down facing the mother's rear. 
Welcome to life, little one. C. They have cubed shaped poop. D. All of the above. The answer is D. The cube shaped poop thing, like, literally blew my mind. What's up, Mike? E. Which one of these can a wallaby not actually do? A. Produce two different types of milk for their offspring at the same time. B. Climb trees. C. Leap 13 feet or 4 meters. D. Look obnoxiously cute. The answer is B. Climb trees. Who knew? So here's the dingo, which pretty much looks exactly like a regular dog. Which one of these is true about the dingo? A. Dingoes are not native to Australia. B. Dingoes can shoot lasers out of their eyes. C. Only the females take care of the pups. D. Dingoes hunt mainly during the day to see prey better. The answer is A. Dingoes are originally from Asia and came to Australia more than 4,600 years ago. All right, so this is Elvis, the crankiest croc in Australia. Which one of these is true about crocs, or salties as some Australians call them? A. They can get up to 2,200 pounds, or 1,000 kilograms. B. They can live in fresh water if they don't want to be salty over crocodile tears anymore. C. They make chirping sounds before they hatch in their eggs. D. All of the above. The answer is D. All of the above. Echidna? Echidna? So it's like a. And he's like vine. an indestructible. Yeah. Oh, wait, so it's like a hedgehog. Yeah, like a hedgehog. Yeah, yeah, so sharp. Echidna. And he's got like little claws, so he digs like really wicked burrows. The echidna gets its name from A. The ancient Aboriginal word for thorny wallaby. B. The Greek mythology character that was half woman, half snake. C. A bunch of boring scientists trying to be clever. D. A Dutch explorer, which translates into porcupine. The answer is B. Which is quite surprising when you think about it because it doesn't look like a woman or a snake. But the idea was that it has qualities of both a mammal and a reptile. I, whatever, dude. I'm still all about the thorny wallaby. Thank you so much for watching, and how did you guys do on the trivia? Let me know in the comments section below, and I'll see you next week.